in the frame, which is good. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. a bit behind. <laughs> yeah, no, perfectly fine. Um, yeah, hello again, everyone. Uh, as I said before, my name is Bree, and I'm the community coordinator for the gathering for Open Science Hardware Community. But we typically just call it the GOSH community because that's much easier. Um, just a bit of a preface, I don't have much of a technical background. I, my background is mostly in community organizing and I've done a lot of work in citizen science and community science spaces. Uh, so this presentation today is going to be a little bit more about kind of how GOSH as a community functions and a little bit more about the organizational structure of it and less so on the technical side of hardware. So. Some of you might have seen before two terms when you see the acronym GOSH. You might have seen Gathering for Open Science Hardware, but also Global Open Science Hardware. And before I go further into what GOSH is, I really want to bring this up and acknowledge that these two terms actually can exist at the same time. And so we found in the GOSH community that basically Global Open Science Hardware kind of reflects this broader movement um, of making open science hardware commonplace and ubiquitous. But within that, you have this gathering, this specific convening space that's called the Gathering for Open Science Hardware. And so sometimes it can be a bit confusing when you see both of these terms being used. But at least me personally, I view it as the Gathering for Open Science Hardware is this community nested within this broader global open science hardware movement. Um, so yeah, interesting space where both can exist. Um, this also emerged because we found that when you translate the acronym for GOSH, it doesn't necessarily translate perfectly into other languages. So our community has kind of found that it's okay if different translations emerge and we use different terminologies when referencing GOSH. So just an interesting little fact if you've ever seen those words used before. But today I'm gonna to focus specifically on the gathering for open science hardware when I say GOSH. So for the rest of this presentation, when I say GOSH, I'm talking about gathering. Um, and this is because the GOSH community, um, it came about to be a convening space and a networking space for this global community that's pushing forward open science hardware. Um, and we have shared values that are laid out by our manifesto and a shared call to action and goals that are laid out in our roadmap. Um, and so it is, the purpose of this is to really bring community together around shared goals of making open science hardware ubiquitous. Before we talk about open, I get more into GOSH, I should probably explain open science hardware as well. Um, I know the first time I heard that word, I said, what does that mean? <laughs> so we can't really talk about open science hardware unless we explain open source hardware. Uh, some of you are probably familiar with the definition from the Open Source Hardware Association, but basically open source hardware, it just references any devices whose designs are made publicly available. Uh, so that anyone can modify, distribute, make, but also sell that design as well. Um, and I just want to acknowledge that open science hardware, it takes this concept of open source hardware and it applies it specifically to the scientific tools that we use for scientific research. So I like to think of microscopes, environmental sensors, um, something that you might imagine in a lab or out in the field, but the kind of definitions and boundaries around science hardware is up for debate and discussion as well. Uh, but basically it's this kind of focus on the design file being shared using an open license. Um, my video is supposed to be here. Where are you, video? <laughs> ah, I don't know where it went. Hmm. Um, I don't have my video today, but that's perfectly fine. Um, we're just going to have a blank screen. I'm going to tell you about it. Basically, the GOSH community is known for our annual gatherings, and I'll actually just go, ah, whoa, it appeared. Hmm. <laughs> Strange. Ah. I don't know why there was two. <gasps> oh. This has not happened, but it seems to be working. Oh, nice. Oh, I'm so excited about this. I will make this full screen so that we can see it. Basically, the purpose of what I wanted to do here, if the audio works, is instead of me just telling you all about what GOSH is, I wanted to show you a short video from our recent gathering so you can see kind of what folks experience when they go to GOSH events. Oh, it's on the computer. Um, oh, OK. OK, if we can hear it. Cool. Open science hardware is about clear boxes. It's about being able to see everything inside of your tool, know exactly how it works, and know how it can be replicated for anyone in the world. This year, we brought the Gathering for Open Science Hardware to Panama. Um, I'm really excited about having us in Panama because there's almost no place on Earth 
where you can have this very fascinating intersection, especially for a group that's as interested in science and technology as us, to have both of those right there, this massive globalization right next to a bunch of howler monkeys uh, making sounds in the jungle. Probably the most important thing about the GOSH community is making these connections between all of these wonderfully strange individuals who are all incredibly active and excited about sharing their thing and finding outlets and communities for them to share with. Cool. Apologize, it was a little quiet, <laughs> but at least there was subtitles, so that helped. Um, cool. Let's see. How can I get back to the presentation? Oh, one of these. Uh, is it this one? Aha, yes, cool. We guessed right. Yeah, so basically that was a video from our most recent gathering that we had in Panama in 2022. Uh, and basically the gatherings, which are just in-person events that the GOSH community hosts, is kind of where the community came about. Um, the first one happened in 2016 at CERN. Um, and it was at this event that I think it was probably less than 50 or so people. They got together and they wrote the GOSH Manifesto. Uh, and I want to talk about this document in particular because it was a really important moment in which they documented the shared values and principles uh, within the community. And ever since the creation of that document, it's helped people like me who have joined GOSH a little bit later. I joined in 2021. Um, the manifesto has been kind of like a compass in understanding what the community wants to achieve and what sort of values we hold together. Um, so after they met in 2016, um, they then met again in Chile in 2017. Um, with a group of about 100 people, they collectively wrote the GOSH Roadmap. Um, and this very long document basically just outlines actions that we can take um, as a community to make open science hardware ubiquitous by 2025. That's kind of our overarching goal. The 2025 part is a bit of a question mark, but <laughs> anyways, to make it widespread and commonplace. Um, yeah. After that, we've met in Shenzhen, China before, um, and then also from 2019 to 2021, um, the community did not meet in person, but was still quite active on our forum. And we did like virtual community calls and things like that to kind of keep a sense of belonging and kind of consistency in the community. Um, so yeah, ha last one was in Panama in 2022, and then we hope to actually do another one in 2025 in Bali, Indonesia. Um, I mentioned the roadmap and I just want to bring it up again. Um, I also forgot to mention in the beginning that I have linked in the schedule to a resource guide. So if there's anything that I talk about today that you're interested in knowing more about, I put links into it there so you don't have to be stressed about taking pictures or asking for certain things. Um, yeah, so definitely check out the resource guide. It's got links to things like the roadmap. Um, but yeah, it covers a wide range of actions from creating mentorship programs and pipelines for people working on open hardware to creating policies aimed at key stakeholders and things like that. Um, I do want to bring up the policy briefs that we have as well. Um, in 2021, we did a series of writing workshops um, with technology transfer offices, international policy makers, and also research funders. Um, those were three audiences that we thought were key to engage with in order to make open science hardware more widespread and increase the uptake of it. Um, those are on our website. I definitely recommend checking them out if you're interested in policy around open science hardware. And then we also have, it's nearly 100 pages long, but it's a very useful document on how to run a GOSH event. Uh, so typically GOSH events are run in an unconference style where people set the agenda that morning before the event starts. Um, and we've documented the processes that we take to host an event so that we don't really lose that institutional memory over time. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in kind of event organizing and want to do something around open science hardware, uh, that is a really, really good document as a resource. We also have tons of other resources as well, but that would be a whole nother presentation. Like, <laughs> I'm not going to get too far deep into it. Um, the next thing I want to mention is just the importance of the GOSH network itself. Um, so we have GOSH, which represents kind of this global meeting point, but we also have several regional communities that have emerged, um, specifically RIGOSH in Latin America and Africa OSH in Africa. Um, and this is because as a global community, we realize that in order to truly grow and scale, we need to do so in a very decentralized and localized way. 
Um, so a lot of these communities have emerged um, that are using open science hardware, but within very specific local contexts and to meet certain local needs. Um, so yeah, it's nice to have regional groups that emerge over time. And then a new thing that's actually happening this year is we're gonna have our first ever cohort of ambassadors that will be representing um, GOSH and open science hardware at their own respective communities. Um, we'll be announcing the first round of selected ambassadors in August, and we'll also be sharing an ambassador handbook that's not only meant for the selected ambassadors, but anyone who wants to represent open science hardware or GOSH within their community. So we don't just want to limit, limit it to the program. If anyone's interested in having like a document with different resources or ways to go about representing GOSH, that's why we created it. Cool. And then I do just want to close on this quote today. Um, so I really like this quote because I think it touches on the importance of open hardware and open science hardware, but the fact that it's also embedded in social realities as well. Um, and it's from Dr. Julieta Orancio, who will be joining us soon. She's not here yet. Um, and Shannon Dos Megan, who have done a lot of policy work in the GOSH community. Uh, and I'm just going to read it out loud to you all because I really resonate with it. Uh, and it's by allowing multiple perspectives and needs to materialize in research equipment, open hardware can become a powerful tool for transforming power dynamics um, in knowledge production, offering a glimpse of what more efficient and more inclusive research could look like in the near future. Thank you. Um, yeah, that's all for my presentation. I do have a couple comments on the code of conduct and accessibility that I will touch on really quick. Um, some of you may have seen an email I sent out this week with the GOSH code of conduct. Um, I send that out in advance because um, at any GOSH events, whether they're online or in person, we want to ensure that our environment remains safe, inclusive, and respectful. Um, if you, a situation arises and you would like to report any sort of violation of the code of conduct or if something makes you uncomfortable, both myself and Laura, Laura, if you want to raise your hand again. Laura, yeah, we are the, you're like, woo, woo. Yeah. Yeah, no worries. Um, we are the safety officers, so to speak, but you can come to us if you raise any concerns about the code of conduct. And we also have a tiny little blue box out by the check-in desk if you want to anonymously report anything, and we'll do our best to check that and work on it. Um, yeah, that's all for code of conduct. The restrooms are further down there if you need to use the bathroom. I think most of you saw them at the end of this hallway. And yeah, I think that's all I have to share today. Thank you. Cool. cool. Um, I guess I have time for questions. I think I ended 11, so yeah, any questions about GOSH or anything I talked about? Do you have examples of what open source hardware was created with GOSH? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, and one thing I didn't touch on that's also in the resource guide is we have on our website, we actually have sort of like a pre-directory, but a list of open science hardware projects that you can click around and see. But Kind of like one of the most prominent examples that we talk about a lot is the open flexure microscope. I don't know if you all have heard of that before. Um, it's a 3D printable modular um, open source microscope um, that's used for malaria detection. That's really cool. Um, I recommend checking that device out. Um, we've got a couple other people that work on open source uh, like air quality monitors. I know someone from the University of Texas in Austin that's working on that. Um, I'm actually, so I'm actually sadly going to be leaving GOSH in a few weeks because I'm starting a research project in Panama on an open source insect monitor. Uh, so in the conservation space, we have monitors that are being developed openly and things like that. There's really a whole range <laughs> of different ones, but it's a really good question. Um, yeah, any other? But yeah, you work with many regional uh, communities. Mm -hmm. So the different communities probably have different uh, resources available to them. There may be also different types of licensing agreements depending yeah. on legislation. Can you talk a little bit about that? Oh, that's a really good question. <laughs> Um, I don't know that much around licenses. I'm not a lawyer, so I cannot comment too much on that. Um, for my instance with GOSH, I've been more at the level of the global community and working at, in that regard. But I don't know, Laura, if you know more about REGOSH and kind of how they manage different yeah, licenses yeah. and... Licenses. Yeah. Yeah. They also secure their own funding sources, I think, specific to Latin America as well. I can't remember the name of it. Yeah. Uh, 
Um, yeah, and then I had another comment on that that I completely forgot, so I apologize. <laughs> I've lost it. Um, yeah, other questions? Cool. Yeah. Awesome. If not, that's fine. We're doing great on time. I'm very impressed. <laughs> um, cool. I think next up we had Julieta, but Jean Martin, if it's okay, would you mind going and doing your presentation now because she's not here yet? Sure. Yeah, sure. if that's okay with you, we could, we could jump to that one.